Welcome to this video on the OKR cycle. We've already been through objectives, we've been through key results, we've been through the planning habit, we've been through the execution cadence, and now we're talking about the quarterly OKR cycle. So what I'm gonna do is talk about how to put this together in a larger setting and how to integrate this into your, um, uh, your working environment. Remember we had this video, this uh, slide here about the OKR cycle. It's basically, this is what it looks like. You've set OKRs, you're doing some work for three months. You can change the cycle to four months or six months or whatever you need, but three months is very typical, usually aligned with, cal with calendar quarters. And then at the end of that, you review and see how they go. Now we're gonna talk about this review in a moment, but first of all, I wanna go through what the an OKR cycle looks like in a bit more detail. So in this, this uh, slide here, what we have here, you can see at the start of the quarter on the left here, you have have OKRs set in the line. So you're doing some work to set the OKRs, doing the aligning, starting the planning process, reviewing that with each other, making sure that you have the OKRs, the objectives and the key results set and aligned with your strategy and aligned with each other and you've got the plans in place. You kick off with an all hands. We'll be talking about the all hands in this video. Through the quarter, you have the weekly execution cadence. Now we've already talked about that. So that's the weekly execution cadence. Every week you're reading that drum, making sure we're making progress, making sure we're paying attention to the way that the engine is running and what other data and anecdotes we have from our regular operations. In the middle of the quarter, you do a mid-quarter review. And the purpose of this is to do a sense check. Are we still on track? Do we need to do any changes? And to inform you, ready to set the next quarter's OKRs. And then at the end, you do an all hands, which is where you assess how your OKRs went and you run the, the next, you start the next quarter, right? Now these summer, these meetings have different audiences. Your setting and aligning would be with your leadership team. Normally your all hands is with everybody who's involved in these OKRs. Now, if you're doing company level all hands, it's kind of everybody. You kind of want everybody involved. If it's your group level or product level, you just want those people involved. Now, potentially you integrate this into a larger all hands. The mid quarter review is usually your leadership team again, just the leadership team. You don't need everybody in that. It's, it's a more of a discussion meeting. And and then the all hands at the end is with everybody. Okay, so at an all hands, what do we do at the all hands? Because uh, this is where I want to start this conversation around the, the quarterly cycle, because this is the start and end of the cycle. So at this, whether you're at the start or the end, you do the same things. First of all, you say, well, what did we do last quarter? What are the results of our OKRs, right? Um, and what are the big learnings that we had from this? Now, when you have OKRs, I'm going to show you this slide here about this, um, about transparency. Oops about transparency. I'm going to show this slide here about a transparency. This is an OKR with the scores and you might have 70, you might have percentages here. I recommend just using the number of the metric that you have there and showing it. If you want to convert it to a percentage or a score, you can do that if you want, but I find it adds more confusion. But just for clarity's sake, I've got percentages here. We've got 73%, 25%, not 100% and 95% on this particular one here. Now what we're doing is we're creating accountability. We don't need to draw someone over the coals or humiliate them or make them feel bad for only hitting 25%. The fact that it's there and it's in front of everybody actually creates the accountability in the first place. So everybody's already in the situation, where, oh, we've got a problem here. But the key thing when you're presenting this um, uh, this, this uh, kind of results and you have something that isn't optimal is that you focus on what is the learning from this? So we have a 25%. Why did we get 25%? Was it overambitious? Did we under-resource it? Did we make bad decisions? Did we, uh, did we have a system in place that wasn't right? Um, uh, did we have contention for resources and actually we can't do two things at once and we made a trade-off? Uh, what exactly happened here and what can we learn from this? And specifically, what you might even ask, what would we have done differently if we knew what we knew now at the start of the quarter? Like, would we set that key result differently given what we know now? Because um, realistically, you've got to go in with the assumption that people, at least in this context, you're going in with the assumption that people are doing the best they can do with what they have. And if the best they can do is 25%, clearly something was wrong about either the capabilities you've given them or and, and the resources you've given them or the actual goal was not 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 um, uh, not um, uh, reflective of reality. So you're sharing this the, the, these results here, and you're discussing the big learnings that we've come from this. And those big learnings happen especially when you've had a miss. Um, and those misses and the way you present those misses are critical. What you do not want to do in this meeting and in this situation is you do not want to focus on those negatives and focus on the, the, the failures. You want to focus on what do we learn from this and what are we going to do next, right? So that first half of what do we do, what do we achieve, what did we learn from this should be relatively short. That should be like 25% or less of the session. In the second half of the meeting or the second two thirds or three quarters or whatever it is of the meeting, you are talking about what you're doing next. 
And what that means is, a, first of all, you do a strategy review. Like, by the way, this is just remember, this is what we're trying to do overall. Maybe you talk about the vision a little bit. Here's our strategy for our organization. Here's where we're trying to get to, what we're trying to achieve. And then that means that here are our new OKRs, our new objectives and key results for this quarter. And right, you're presenting that in the context of the strategy, because what you're always trying to do is link people's, like get people thinking about the future, right? Not the past, and link what they're doing to the actual strategy, the bigger picture, so they can see the connection there and help make that connection. And then you spend some time on Q and A and discussion to sort of like let people event, let people ask questions, um, even shoot holes in it and understand where the gaps are so that you know what you need to focus on in your execution cycle and what you need to change with your plans. Now, if you've done your setting and planning well, and you've done the planning part where you've reviewed the plans with people, you shouldn't have major issues here. This should be more a matter of people sort of asking questions about how this relates to our strategy, about whether we missed this part for our strategy, about whether we should be doing this and why we're not doing that. And you know, you, you're explaining why we're not doing something that's important is really, is really important, really helpful. Helps people understand what they're doing. That's the all hands, and that happens at the start and at the end of the quarter. And as I said, because you're presenting at the start, this is what we're going to achieve, and at the end you say, this is what we did do, and here's what we're going to do next quarter, that connection helps people understand that overall sort of rhythm of execution and how strategy works, links it to the strategy and helps them know what we're doing going forwards. Doing this in a quarterly cycle, by the way, or in some sort of cycle, I, as I say, I recommend quarterly, but doing this in some sort of cycle, a regular cycle like that, also enables people to have that stop and start. Like, oh, we have a new quarter, let's clear the decks and think about what we're trying to achieve here and actually do that stopping and saying, well, do we really need to finish that other thing that we were working on before? Is that the right thing to do or the wrong thing? Because what will happen by default is everyone will keep on with the momentum and having this break enables people to stop and ask that question. In the middle of the quarter, you've got the mid-quarter review, and this is with a smaller audience. It's not an all-hands, it's not a presentation to everybody. You can, if you want to, if you have an all-hands more than every month, every quarter, um, you can do this with along with that all-hands. I have had some customers that actually do a monthly all-hands, and they do two mid-quarter reviews at the start and the second one, and it's, it's fine to do that. But the mid-quarter review should really be with the leadership team. And what you're doing is you're checking in on where are we with our OKRs? Like, where let's look at the numbers here look at the data look at the key results where are we are we on track are we likely to get to the right place and we're actually doing a little check-in to say are they still valid is this still what we should be doing or should we should we change now you ideally don't want to change if you don't have to but sometimes that little mid-quarter review check-in goes you realize oh, we're going to fail this key result here unless we stop doing that one and that one's not very important and we need to do this one. And it causes that ability to do this. Now you can do that in your regular execution meetings, but the mid-quarter review is a time when the leaders step back and say, and just ask that question consciously. And what you're doing is you're asking, should we change anything? Should we change our OKRs? Should we change our resourcing? Should I change our prioritization? The weekly one's really about planning and changing the plan. This is really about that investment level. Like what are we trying to achieve? What are we? What are our targets? What where are we putting our resources, and how are we prioritizing these things together? And this is where some tough trade-offs have to often get made. Now, in this mid-quarter review, because now you know where you go, where you've got to so far, and you've got a fair idea of where you're going to get to by the end of the quarter, hopefully, in this review, you're then well prepared to be able to set the next quarter's OKRs. And this may require triggering off some strategy and other planning meetings, and just setting up that OKR um, cycle the next OKR cycle to set OKRs and do the planning in the second half of the quarter. Okay, so that mid-quarter review fits in to this weekly cadence. You have the set in the line process, you then have an all hands, you have a mid-quarter review with the weekly execution cadence before the all hands at the end. Now, in the next video, I'm gonna talk about how OKR cycles fit together.